The Orlando Magic select. In today's video, I will be listing 10 rookies from the 2022 NBA Draft that I think will have the biggest year one. But before we start, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Without further ado, let's get started. Paolo Banquero was first overall by the Orlando Magic. His NBA-ready body and skills were enough to draft him over other talents, such as Jabari Smith Jr. and Chet Holmgren. The 6'10 forward averaged 17 points, 8 rebounds, and even added 3 assists showing his versatility as a playmaker. He showed more of his versatility in his NBA Summer League debut, where he dropped 17 points, 4 rebounds, and 6 assists in just 26 minutes on the court. While his biggest concern is defense, I don't see it being that much of a problem, mainly due to the defensive talent Magic already has on their roster. For starters, Wendell Carter Jr. and Mo Bamba are some of the best young defensive bigs in the league, and could easily share the floor with Bancaro due to their ability to space the floor. Bancaro could possibly be just what the Magic needed to get their organization back and running. With scoring guards such as Jalen Suggs and Cole Anthony, Bancaro could be the final piece for the foreseeable future. Johnny Davis was taken 7th overall by the Washington Wizards. The 6'5 scoring guard averaged 20 points, 8 rebounds, and 2 assists for the Wisconsin Badgers. If you've never watched him play before, then just watch his Big Ten Conference matchup versus third-ranked Purdue. He scorched them for 37 points, 14 rebounds, and even came away with 2 steals and 2 blocked shots. What I believe will set him apart from most rookies is his ability and willingness to play defense. He is the definition of a dog defender, and that's pretty rare given the fact he's a high usage and talented offensive player. Davis also brings versatility in many other ways than scoring the basketball. Like I mentioned earlier, he averaged 8 rebounds as a 6'5 guard, which is great no matter the level. This shows his desire to win at any cost, and he doesn't mind doing the dirty work in order for his team to succeed. Now I know he didn't put on the best performance in his summer league games, but he showed a lot of promise and stability, and if I were you, I wouldn't want to write him off. Dale & Terry was taken 18th overall by the Chicago Bulls. The Arizona Wildcat averaged 8 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists. He just simply knows how to play the game of basketball. At 6'7", he uses his height to see over defenses and deliver pinpoint passes to cutters, and is one of the best lob passers in this year's draft class. He's gifted at anticipating things before they happen, and seems to always be one step ahead of the defenders when making a pass. Terry also made the PAC-12 all-defensive team. He uses his IQ and great instincts to cause chaos for opposing teams. He's always looking to make a play on both ends of the floor, whether that's scoring a basket, making a great pass, or getting a defensive stop. He has all the intangibles to be a star in the NBA. On top of his skills, he has great confidence and is very passionate about playing a winning brand of basketball. Terry's ability to do it all on the court gives Bulls head coach Billy Donovan many options on how to use him. Primary ball handler, secondary ball handler, spot-up shooter, it doesn't matter, he can be successful in any of those roles. Keegan Murray was taken fourth overall by the Sacramento Kings. He's another player who just knows how to play basketball. While playing for the Iowa Hawkeyes, he averaged 24 points. 8 rebounds, and 2 blocks to top it off. Many fans were very skeptical when observing him in college. Many thought his game wouldn't translate to the NBA, but he surely proved the doubters wrong. In four summer league games, Murray averaged 23 points, 7 rebounds, 2 assists while shooting 50% from the field, and 40% from 3. These numbers crowned him the MVP of the 2022 summer league. While his game isn't flashy, he knows exactly what to do in order to secure a win, something the Kings need desperately. Murray gives the Kings another versatile scoring option, all while still being a pretty good defender. He's the type of player that has an extremely high ceiling while also having a good floor. Best case scenario, he becomes a superstar, and the worst case scenario, he becomes a solid NBA starter for a very long time. Sounds pretty promising to me. Jaden Ivey was taken fifth overall by the Detroit Pistons. While playing for Purdue, he averaged 17 points, 3 assists, and grabbed 4 rebounds. Ivy has all the makings of an NBA star. He's a high-flying, high-energy player who will bring tons of excitement to the city of Detroit. Now, I don't want to sound too cliché and compare him to John Morant, but their play style and swagger are far too similar to ignore. Ivy seems to embrace the biggest moments and won't back down from anyone. He will give the Pistons the extra spark they need to take some of the pressure off Cade Cunningham. In his freshman season with Purdue, he shot only 32% from three, but in his sophomore season, it rose all the way up to 36%. This shows his potential as a shooter 
and his ability to get better during the offseason. He also increased his free throw percentage and field goal percentage, which further demonstrates how many extra hours he's willing to work in the gym. All in all, if he can stay relatively healthy, he'll be a good player for a really long time. Dyson Daniels was taken 8th overall by the New Orleans Pelicans. He averaged 11 points, 4 assists, and 2 steals for the G League Ignite. Daniels is still a bit raw offensively. He shot only 25% from 3 and 73% from the free throw line. But not only is he a really good passer, but his defense alone is what made him one of the best prospects in the draft. Daniels has the ability to defend positions 1 through 3 at a high level. Pairing him with Herbert Jones will make the Pelicans perimeter defense a nightmare to go against. He uses quick and active hands to disrupt opposing players, and is also really effective at navigating his way through screens and sticking to the ball handler. Now, sure, if he wants to stay on the court, he has to improve his shooting and finishing around the basketball but he has shown glimpses of having a nice floater and the ability to be crafty around the basket. I don't think he'll be a knockdown shooter anytime soon, but he has pretty decent shot mechanics, which will be a great starting point for the Pelicans trainers to work with. Mark Williams was taken 15th overall by the Charlotte Hornets. He averaged 11 points, 7 rebounds, and nearly 3 blocks for the Duke Blue Devils. Williams possesses a monstrous 7 foot 7 wingspan, which allows them to easily block and alter shots around the rim. The Hornets desperately needed a true rim protector to add to their lackluster defense. Williams brings much rim protection and then some. Mark Williams has the potential to be a premier lob threat. With LaMelo Ball being his point guard, you can expect at least three to four lob passes between the two. Williams also comes from a winning environment, playing under an all-time great coach who has produced many valuable bigs in the league, such as Wendell Carter Jr., Mason Plumlee, and Marvin Bagley. While I think he'll be a better defender than all three of those players, he's still quite raw offensively. He isn't a three-point shooter, nor does he have a dependable mid-range jumper, but if he can build upon the few mid-range jumpers and post moves we've seen in college, then his ceiling is very high. With the modern big men of the NBA quickly taking over, it's crucial that he develops a decent jump shot to keep the defense honest. At worst, he's a valuable rim-protecting role player for many years to come. Terry Eason was taken 17th overall by the Houston Rockets. He averaged 17 points, 6 rebounds, 2 steals, and a block per game for the LSU Tigers. Eason was one of, if not the best, defender in all of college basketball. His combination of length, anticipation, and athleticism separates him from most players in his draft class. He's more than capable of defending positions 1 through 4 and has shown the ability to defend smaller guards out on the perimeter while also being long and strong enough to hold his own in the paint. He has shown the potential to be a solid 3-point shooter and a free throw shooter, but consistency is the key for him. Developing a dependable 3-point shot will not only open up his game, but it will make the Rockets a whole lot better offensively and give Jalen Green more room to work with and get to the basket. He has already shown his defensive prowess on multiple occasions in the summer league, and has even been a decent floor spacer. If all of these pieces to his game click together, then watch out! A.J. Griffin was taken 16th overall by the Atlanta Hawks. He averaged 10 points, 6 rebounds while shooting 44% from the 3-point line for the Duke Blue Devils. After coming back from injury, Griffin showed the ability to score on all three levels and was a natural shot creator. Not to mention, he was one of the best 3-point shooters in college basketball. Griffin will be the perfect player to put alongside Trey Young and Murray for that reason alone. They were both top 5 in assists so adding a three-point sniper would improve their offense instantly. If Griffin can expand on his shot-creating abilities, then he could be more valuable to the Hawks than I previously thought. Griffin's only major concerns are his defense, which I think will drastically improve due to the fact he's already a very athletic player. At times, he looked a little sluggish when moving laterally and wasn't always fully engaged. On the bright side, he is just 19 years old, which means he has a lot of room to grow and develop. All in all, AJ Griffin deserves a lot of attention and has the potential to be an important piece to a team with championship aspirations. Max Christie was taken 35th overall by the Los Angeles Lakers. He averaged 9 points and 4 rebounds while shooting 31% from 3 and 82% from the free throw line for the Michigan State Spartans. Max Christie had high expectations coming into college, and although he didn't quite live up to them, there is a lot to be happy about if you're a Laker fan. He has great shot mechanics and a smooth pull-up jumper in the mid-range area. Moving without the ball is another thing he excels at. He's always looking to create separation off of screens. Defensively, he uses his length to his advantage and moves well laterally without fouling. Being on the same team as LeBron and Anthony Davis does have its perks, 
This will allow Christy to get numerous open looks on a nightly basis. Did you enjoy the video? If so, hit the like button and subscribe to NBA Swish for more amazing content exactly like this. Hope to see you in the next one.